What on earth is going on? Just one week into this season and with two of the top five leagues having not even kicked off yet, we have seen a remarkable number of knee and more importantly ACL injuries. And of course, it really wasn't too long ago when an injury of this nature would be career ending. However, they were a freak occurrence, very rare at even the top level. 20 years later, and footballers are almost 30 times as likely to be on the receiving end of ACL surgery, and that's in teenagers alone. The fact of the matter is, we're seeing career-altering knee injuries happen more and more commonly as each year goes by with one question on everyone's lips. Why? And so, in this video, I'm going to cover a few of the factors that may be causing it. Now first, it's important I cover what an ACL actually is and why an injury is so devastating. To put it simply, your knee is where three bones in your leg are joined by four major ligaments, the medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament, posterior cruciate ligament, and most famously, the anterior cruciate ligament, aka the ACL. These ligaments keep the knee in place, allowing it to flex and extend as well as allowing forwards and backwards and side to side movement of the body. The job of the ACL specifically is to prevent the tibia bone from sliding out in front of the femur and to provide rotational stability to the knee. And not only this, but it's also generally far weaker than the posterior cruciate ligament, making it easier to tear and therefore a more common injury. Now, as you can imagine, given that the ACL essentially allows any rotational or side to side movement in the knee, if this injured or even ruptured, it makes most aspects of pretty much any sport near impossible. And thanks to its role and placement within the body, it's both very hard to treat and sees a very lengthy recovery time. However, that being said, if a ligament which is scientifically believed to have evolved over hundreds of thousands of years and is specifically designed to allow these movements, why are we seeing it cause so many issues in the modern day when medical equipment and research is the best it's ever been? Well, to answer that question, nobody really knows, especially not me, a football YouTuber who got all of this medical research from studies on the internet and got an E in A-level biology. That being said though, what I can do instead is explain some popular theories put forward by people a lot smarter than me. But first let me lay out the basics. These increased ACL injuries are not only an issue in senior men's football but are also increasing in the youth and amateur game as well as being far more likely to occur in women's football from professional all the way down to grassroots. The issue also becomes far less focused on football where when you take a look at the bigger picture, knee and ACL injuries are increasing in pretty much every sport from basketball to badminton. However, that being said, the issue does seem to be particularly bad in the not so beautiful game. The list of elite players who have recovered from an ACL injury just 15 years ago is minimal, with the likes of Alan Shearer, Robert Pires and Xavi being among three of the biggest names who have ever recovered from one, in a time where far few players were receiving them anyways. Fast forward to today, and that list is huge. From women's football to men, superstars to non-league bench players, if I were to name every player who's been unfortunate enough to receive an ACL injury, I'd be going on for hours. But here's just a few random ones. Beth Mead, Virgil van Dijk, Leah Williamson, Marco Royce, Yannick Bellassi, Tino Livramento, Marie Antoinette Katoto, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Vivian Medima, Gabriel Jesus, Alexia Patea, Sami Khedira, Simone Magill, Rob Holden, Corentin Tolisso, Hector Bellerin, Victor Valdez, and so, so many more. Even just this season alone, we've seen the injury with Emi Buendia, Thibaut Courtois, Yuri and Timber and most unfortunately Tyrone Mings, who finds himself in an even more devastating list of players who suffered multiple ACL ruptures, amongst the likes of Nicolo Zagnoli, Giuseppe Rossi, Bradley Dack, Lewis Cook, Johnny Otto and so on. The fact is, this is not normal. Humans have been playing sports for thousands and thousands of years, with ancient civilizations even partaking in some that were so intense they would be unimaginable today. And yet in an age where technology and training regimes are more advanced than ever before, we're seeing this issue become more and more frequent. In a June report by Sky Sports, various doctors mentioned that the fact that technology has changed modern life to the extent that it has actually made ACL injuries more likely. And in fact, everyone watching this video right now would actually be increasing the risk of having one simply by watching the video. Now don't worry, I did say that last line just to scare you a little bit. Watching YouTube videos is not going to weaken your ligaments, but Dr. Stefan Kluzek has pointed out that with people spending more and more time on social media, when they go to play a high intensity sport like football, it's going to cause a bigger shock and stress on the body, in particularly problem areas like the knees, compared to a few generations ago, where people lived a far more active lifestyle away from the intense exercises like sports. 
This argument is further backed up by pretty much any doctor saying that warming up the body for at least 10 to 15 minutes before playing a game is absolutely necessary for injury prevention. And so no, you don't necessarily need to spend less time talking to your friends on social media or watching incredible YouTube videos like mine. Subscribe if you're new by the way. But if you are an aspiring footballer or just play the sport for fun, to reduce any risk a general recommendation would be to do some simple exercise like just walking each day. And so is social media the sole cause for an increasing knee injury problem? Problem. No, of course not. Which then brings me on to the second point that's being spoken about a lot, which is training regimes. At the top level, every single player will have an individual training plan made to be optimal for the development and maintenance of their capabilities. However, with that has come a lot of criticism from various people both in and out of sport. In researching for this topic, I found this video by a basketball YouTuber, which will be linked in the description, where one point specifically stood out to me, being from Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant's ex-trainer Tim Grover. To summarise, Grover mentioned that modern training techniques have their pros and cons and attributed a rise of injuries in the NBA, many of which being ACLs, to a lack of weightlifting and other less modern training techniques. Now a lot of what he mentioned simply wouldn't translate to football, for example he spoke about how weightlifting allows the body to get used to sudden changes in force, however in football building huge amounts of muscle has never really been beneficial to the masses, particularly compared to a sport like basketball as it requires players to be more agile, lighter and so on, as not only is the pitch much larger but each player will spend far more time out playing in a match due to the rules of the game. That being said though, his comments do still hold some value, where instead of only focusing on what's going wrong right now, we could also look at the things that went right in the past and look to implement them back into modern football training and whether that can help reduce the number of injuries we're seeing. However, once again, is developed training regimes going to be the sole cause of increasing ACL injuries? Almost certainly not, and so that brings me to the final point that's the most theorised, and to be fair it does seem like it makes the most sense, which is that the intensity of modern football is simply too much for a human body to handle. Think about the modern game. Intense pressing, shots more powerful than ever, players getting quicker and stronger whilst having to play more and more games. We haven't seen a normal football calendar year since the end of 2019, where both the pandemic and a Winter World Cup absolutely decimated time off for players. Oh yeah, and if we're looking at why specifically this season has had a ridiculously high number of harsh injuries, just take a look at the changes that came into effect this summer. From longer games to less time wasting, football is becoming even harder on players, and in just a couple months it's only going to get worse with a massively increased number of suspensions. With yellow cards more common but the cut-off point for bans staying the same, more and more players are going to be suspended, effectively decreasing squad depth and increasing workload, on top of these other changes which have already increased increase the workload more than we've ever seen before and things are only going to get worse. In 2025, only two years away, the first 32 team club world cup will take place. That means that theoretically a top Premier League side like Man City could make it all the way through to the final stage of every competition in 23-24 and then see their players head off to the Euros and Copper America, reach the final stages of that before kickstarting the Premier League less than a month later including pre-season tours all across the world, then play the Community Shield and Super Cup early into the season, once again go to the late stages of every competition and then enter another month-long tournament where the best teams in the world will be facing each other before once again starting pre-season and tours straight away, before once again kicking off in the Premier League, Community Shield and Super Cup right at the start of the year, before once again going all the way to the latter stages in all competitions before the 2026 World Cup kicks off, which of course like every other summer tournament will take them right back into pre-season the start of the Premier League, Super Cup and Community Shield, before once again going all the way in each of the competitions until we find ourselves to summer 2027, where finally the players will get a proper month long holiday. Oh wait, that's unless you're an African player of course, as the Africa Cup of Nations in both 2025 and 2027 will also be placed in the summer, which is supposedly meant to help ease the workload of players and definitely isn't so that teams can field their strongest 11s year round in order to maximise profits. Now as I mentioned earlier, it shouldn't make sense that ancient sports which were often far more intense than just kicking a ball about had far less injuries, but when you're playing this many games for that long, training in between and using modern equipment to push your body to its boundaries, and increasing number of injuries should be expected and so perhaps it's nothing special about the ACL in particular which is causing its injuries to rise and instead it could just be that it's unfortunate enough to find itself situated in a very important part of the body for pretty much all sports and so is destined to start failing more and more often.
Now, many scientists have still said that current sports schedules are in fact maintainable for humans, but many have also said the complete opposite. And so in a world where devastating injuries are more and more common, perhaps we should start taking into account what's best for the players both physically and mentally, rather than what's best for making money. I think everyone watching this video loves football, but at the same time, you should love yourself more.